the story of a dildo, a tale in five tableau. Tableau one, the dream. Madison Square is a fashionable locality in New York, attractive in its architecture, its position, and its inhabitants. Well-to-do merchants, cotton brokers, railway contractors, and bankers lived there. And there, their fashionable wives and daughters gave receptions and held parties that were the talk of New York society. The belle of Madison Square was Flora McPherson. She's been celebrated in song for his for it was Flora McPherson of Madison Square that made three separate journeys to Paris in search of novelties when she had, quote, nothing to wear. That is, nothing that was not perfectly fresh within the last fortnight. But this history deals with events in the life of Flora before she made the celebrated journey spoken of. As yet, she was but 17, plump, fair, rosy, with a wonderful fund of spirits, quick at repartee, and altogether what the Yankees call a smart gal. Flora's father was from a Scotch family, and the acuteness he inherited had enabled him to take advantage of numerous lucky chances in the way of railway work, the result of the combined skill and luck being a fortune. Flora was his only child. Her mother, a woman devoted to fashion and not companionable to him, so that Flora was indeed her dad's idol, and all that money could purchase her, she had. Her private purse was always well replenished, and she was in many respects a girl to be envied. Of course, oh, a young lady- Her private purse, is that a euphemism? I think that's a little bit of a double entendre there. Um, <laughs> cool. That's, I think that's what that is, maybe. I'm glad I wasn't um, the only one that caught that. Her private yeah. purse is always full, well replenished. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't sure, but if we were going to, you know, uh, if slow down to comment on the the wordage here, but uh, I, I was looking at these terms, these very outdated terms, like smart gal. Are we still allowed to say that? <laughs> <laughs> you, no, you'd get, you'd get canceled for saying that. Okay. Well then good thing you said it. <laughs> um, it doesn't count if you're quoting someone, that's the rule. <laughs> um, all right. Of course, a young lady with such considerable personal attractions and with such an ample stock of dollars in perspective was not without admirers, but as yet, no aspiring young gentleman had made any impression upon her. She was heart whole, and though fond of society, at every gathering, she seemed to take more pleasure in the society of her young lady friends than in that of any gentleman who hung over her chair and poured his vapid small talk into her ear. Her two close companions were Laura Addison and Maud Trump. What a Laura sexy was... name. Can we just stop and admire? <laughs> Maud Trump. <laughs> These are my two friends, Laura Addison and Maud Trump. <laughs> <laughs> like, how could the, uh, how could the, the many, the gentlemen even notice Laura Addison or, or, you know, Flora for that matter, when there's the beautiful, sensuous Maud Trump over there. Maud Trump. So oh, man. can we clarify, was the author of this a woman? Uh, oh god, we'd have to scroll uh, up to find that out. Oh, there man. are a couple, yeah, there are a couple of uh, indicators here that I'm wondering if I'm right on. It doesn't say. Hmm. I guess we'll never know. So yeah, the specifically the vapid. What was it? The vapid, vapid small talk that men are po pouring into her ear. I was like, oh, that screams of like <laughs> someone that is like sick of dudes coming up to her and fucking trying to approach her but then mm -hmm. also the part where she just casually is just like yeah the mother fucking sucked <laughs> like obviously <laughs> but obviously her dad hated the mother is like a little bit i guess that's just like boomer shit but mm -hmm. i guess more than boomer shit at this point but anyway. yeah what what's the what's the generational name for people in the 1890s do we have one of those gilded agers i don't know um all right uh where are we mod Laura Addison and Maud Trump. Uh, Laura was the youngest daughter of a cotton broker, a charming girl about Flora's age, but dark, warm, and impulsive, a good heart and a genial temper, with southern blood in her veins that made her passionate and daring. I don't love the southern blood daughter of a cotton broker here. Yeah, so uh, far off to a bad start. Problematic. Mm, does um, not bode well for Laura. Maud was of a German family. Quiet, subdued, lymphatic, dreamy, and poetical. 
but her quiet eyes shewed a nature you could put firm trust in, and anybody who secured the affection of Maud Trump would have a friend steadfast and true. I can't say her name. <laughs> yeah, everyone's everyone's putting Maud Trump immediately in the friend zone. It's like, hey, Maud Trump, you're really, trust me, you're really, oh, God. you must, I, you're a really beautiful woman for someone, and... <laughs> I, I really uh, see you as a friend, steadfast and true. <laughs> uh, if I had to describe you, I would describe you mainly as lymphatic. Uh, I think that's a good... Um, you know, there's just not enough lymphatic women out there anymore, you know? <laughs> we, need to, we need to return to tradition there. That lymph. Um, <laughs> two, two P's, two H's. What uh, that lymph do? <laughs> um, Maud was older than the other two and was engaged but her lover held an important position in a mercantile house and was now in europe for a year or two on business so that for consolation during his absence maud was much in the society of the two girls it was a quiet autumn evening when the three sat together in flora's boudoir they had not they had not been discussing shakespeare in the musical glasses but a theme more interesting to all women love Shakespeare and the Musical Glasses, my new band name. Please continue. <laughs> <laughs> Flora and Laura had been congratulating Maud on the approaching return at the return AF, uh, her fiance. <laughs> it would be there so hard. <laughs> he's, he's returning return AF. AF. <laughs> um, <laughs> the return the return of her fiance uh, to be followed soon by her marriage a prospect that poor timid Maud seemed to dread. Oh. Oh shit, it's me. So you wish that courtship could go on forever, do you? Well, Said poor Flora. girl. <laughs> Said Flora, who is not the Southern Belle here. <laughs> what? I, no, oh, is Laura the Southern Laura, Belle? <laughs> Laura's the Southern Belle. But you, I, did it say I'm from anywhere else? You're from New York, I guess. Okay, I'm not going to check that. I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> hey, I'm caught in here. <laughs> so you wish that courtship could go on forever, do you? Well, poor girl's rather rough on you to have a slice of two years take out of a pleasant courtship. And then on Henry's return, before you've got used to him again, to be... I don't need to fan myself if I'm not a Southern Belle. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, where was I? <clears throat> Reading here. It is rather rough on you to have a slice of two years take out of a pleasant courtship, and then on Henry's return, before you have got used to him again, to be hurried into all the abruptness and reality of matrimony. <laughs> Still, Maud, my dear, realization, in spite of metaphysics, must be better than anticipation. No, I don't know what that means. I know my dinner itself is better than the pleasure of expecting it, and it would take some powerful argument to convince me that a husband we can love is not better than a lover we can ditto. What do you say, Laura? A lover I don't know what, what ditto means here. <laughs> I, I, I read that as... I, I read that as she's she's using ditto, I think, re regarding the love aspect, saying, why would I love a husband when I could just love someone that I actually love? Mm. Unless ditto is just New York slang for a dildo. <laughs> <laughs> a lover we can, it's just diddle. It's just diddle. It yeah. hasn't like. Maybe. Um, also, I think, Ke Kelly, I think the voice you're doing for Maud, or the voice you're doing would, is exactly how I imagine Maud talking instead. <laughs> yeah, but she's, she's German, so that'll be a fun one. <laughs> oh, I'm not, I'm not even remotely going to attempt that. <laughs> well, I've already I've already committed to it. Oh yeah, okay. So she's saying that like dinner, it eating dinner is better than waiting for dinner. So having a husband is better than like being in courtship. Yeah, that's I, how I read. She's just making I, like a parallel structure there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right. So I, I'm done talking then. <laughs> oh, I am with you, my love, by all means. Replied Laura. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> for my part, I quite envy Maud her good fortune. Henry is a fine, manly fellow, and I'm sure he loves her. <laughs> and his two years in Europe have no doubt improved him, if that were possible. I, I anticipate her a very happy life. Oh, you mis quite mistake me if you think I have any dread or doubt about my future. Said Maud earnestly. It's the actual plunge itself that I dread. I don't pretend to be any more modesty than any other girl, but I regard with positive horror the idea of, or of 
well, I suppose, I need not be afraid of my own sex, of a man knowing all about me. Fancy now, feeling a man, a naked man, getting into bed with one. Ugh! And Maud positively gave a shudder. I think I see where this is going. Um, <laughs> I, I, I would like to hear a little bit more German uh, coming Oi. from Maud. Oh, you uh, quite mistake me if you think I have any <laughs> dread or doubt about my future. Oh, Jesus Christ. I will it's do Fancy my best. now a man, feeling a man, a <laughs> naked man, getting into bed with me. Ugh. <laughs> uh, uh, who we have now? Uh, Laura, I think. Oh, has... sorry. Ha ha! Laughed quick, impulsive Laura. Oh, God, who's this? Oh, it's me. It's still you. <laughs> Why, my dear child, you shudder at what most women look forward to with supreme delight. And as for getting into bed with you, if I am any judge of Henry's disposition, it strikes me that he will get into more than that. Oh, there now, I beg your pardon. I didn't mean to say that, <laughs> oh, but, I, so but the thought came and slipped out. Sorry, I missed. And she blushingly put her hand before her face. I missed oh, that. she Sorry. did it visually. It was great. It was great oh, okay. visual work. This is why it's okay. not an audio medium. <laughs> okay, I see. Yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't on the camera there. Um, let's see. Maud blushed, and Flora could not help laughing. Well, Maud said, "Flora, I can sympathize with you to some extent, but only to a limited extent. <laughs> from my part, the shock my modesty will receive from the presence or even the contact of my husband." Will, I feel certain, be less than what I shall suffer from what I call the indecent exhibition of a wedding. In the privacy of one's own chamber, with only one's husband to see your blushes, I think there's nothing but what one can get over. But I think it's something awful to be dressed up for an occasion and be stared at by a lot of people who know perfectly well, even down to the youngest boy or girl, what it's all for and what you're going to be done to. <laughs> Oh, boy. Yes, said Laura. I have often thought of that. Why, when I was only 11 years old, I was a bridesmaid to Mary P Parker, and as we came out of the church, the remarks made by the low boys shooed all they knew, shooed they all knew what it meant. It was something awful. Why, one boy positively called out, Oh, my eye, there's another shop going to be open tonight. <laughs> and the coachman... <laughs> And when the coachman drove the carriage up, he didn't come close enough to the curb. One man said, now coachman, come up. The lady can't, young lady can't stretch her leg out all that way. And then a nasty rough fellow says, oh, never fear. She'll stretch more than that if he's up to his work by and by. Oh, oh. oh my dear. I thought poor Mary would have fainted. Yes, a, wed a wedding is all very well for the dresses and all that, but it has its dark side as well. What weddings are these people going to? Yeah. <laughs> Shit was crazy back in 1890. Now to tell you the truth, said Flora, and I shall, since we on the topic, speak without reserve, that remark the man made about, well, about stretching was rude but apropos. And it sets me thinking whether, after all, the embrace of a husband is such a desirable thing. I know I once heard Mama, when she little thought I was listening, tell a lady about the remark a young lady made who was congratulated on a wedding day. I didn't quite catch the, wor the words, but I know the idea was that it was a fun thing to be congratulated upon to be torn all to pieces the first night. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry, I laughed a lot on that one. Do we need to take that line again? <laughs> Um, no, I'm good. I'll, <laughs> I don't, I don't I'll, do I'll allow it. Go for it. <laughs> uh, I did not quite catch the voids, but I know the idea was that it was a fine thing to be congratulated upon to be torn all to pieces the first night. <laughs> I can't help thinking that the actual pain inflicted must be awful and not worth the pleasure they say comes after it. <laughs> I cannot give any opinion, said Laura about a first embrace and the pain it entails. But from an accident, I can give you the, an idea. <laughs> oh, Laura, we know it wasn't an accident. About the first embrace and the pain it, oh, sorry. But from an accident, I can give you an idea of the pleasure. Oh, you need not look so. I don't mean in my own experience. 
But when I was down south on a visit to Uncle Morris's plantation, I got overtaken one night by a storm and crept into one of the sugar houses for shelter. And there I fell asleep in a corner. When I, when I woke, I found I was not alone, for a smart young white man was there. One of the overseers and a young woman, a pretty oh, no. active. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, Nicole. Oh, no, now, no, no, I did, no, no, no. I did cheat by looking this up, but what do you no. think a is? I, I, I know. I know what a is. Yes, dude. And, 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 that's, and, that's, and that's hopefully the last time I will say that word. Yeah, that's the um, baby stop saying that one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's a Google one. Oh, no. <laughs> I hate this. I hate that I learned this today. Did you find similarly that, you know, because refers to a, a quarter, I mean, a quarter something. We don't have to get into it. But then if you're one eighth of that same thing, you're an. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. Um, yeah, that's a it's a it's a troubling aspect of uh, New Orleans history. The uh, uh, Q word balls that they have. Um, yeah, you could look those up too. Um, yeah, balls. We'll move, we'll move on. Like yeah, a ball, that's, that's... like a party. Yeah. Sweet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe start from pretty and just move on past that one. I I knew I was gonna get canceled because of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anyone's gonna get canceled, it's gonna be me. God damn it. it. <laughs> um wow i already hate where this is going <laughs> they were talking earnestly together and i listened at first thinking some plot was on for the slaves were in a dangerous state just then good lord i found a dangerous state so like alabama <laughs> <laughs> a dangerous yeah no shit a dangerous state you mean <laughs> trying to get their freedom um i found however that this was only a love scene and i was doomed to be present at and oh my dear girls, I shall never forget it. After a lot of kissing and toying, the young man, Tony Barker, I found was his name. Oh, she just doxes him in front of all of her families. Her <laughs> all her friends. Got her aunt got her onto a lot of sugar bags and made a capital kind of bed in a corner. And being thrown on a pile of canes was like a state bed and gave me a full view of the whole proceeding. Flora and Maud drew their chairs eagerly up to Laura and in one breath exclaimed, Oh, do oh, tell, tell us about, about it. it. Well then, in perfect confidence, I will. After kissing and playing, Tony, for I learned to call him that, took out his dilly. His di <laughs> dilly. I don't know why I said that with a British accent. His dilly. Oh, don't be so stupid, said Flora. As to call it a dilly, and that is only what they say in the nursery about a little boy. Surely you know some more manly name for a full-grown man's... What? Said Laura, laughing. Why, you hesitate yourself before naming it. However, if it will please you, I will call, you, call it by its proper name. And in these days of women doctors, there can't be any harm in that. Oh, well, thank God we have women doctors so we can say the word penis now. <laughs> Women doctors, am I right? Oh, what a revelation. Well, he took out his penis <laughs> and put it into her hand. And oh, it was a tremendous fella. I couldn't take my eyes off it. It made me burn with blushes. And a great staring stiff thing with an immense red head, enough to frighten anybody. However, Juno... Why did I get Laura? <laughs> Juno was not a bit afraid of it. She fondled and caressed Sorry, what kind of girl was Juno? <laughs> she was a nice one. Okay. <laughs> um, she fondled and caressed it and actually kissed it. Then she laid back and he lifted up her clothes. And, I cert and certainly I never saw straighter or handsomer limbs than were displayed. Well, he got over her and in a moment inserted his pego. Pego, yep. spelled P E G O E for those listening. Is is that Pego? Like, what is that? Pego, 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 eh? Pego, eh? All right. Yeah. Oh, actually, we're almost at the end of a section. We can we can plug through to that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> said Flora. <laughs> I've caught you. There's not a name for it, and a name I saw boy, in a bad book. Oh, Lori, you have to read the book too, or one like it. 
Well, to tell you the truth, I have read one or two, said Laura. For I got at my brother Tom's box one night, and one day, <laughs> hunting for a trinket I thought he had stolen from me in fun. And there I found one or two books. However, don't spoil my story. Well, when he got in, she gave a slight scream, perhaps of a little pain. But in a minute, he, I was changed, I'm sure. For, to, it was changed, I'm sure, to pleasure. For as he pushed in and out, she kept exclaiming, Oh, 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 I shall die. And you will kill me with the pleasure. <laughs> and at last he shot into her his sperm. She clutched him in ecstasy and fainted with delight. I could hardly contain myself, and I felt a most extraordinary sensation in my drawers from sympathy. <laughs> the, that's the sexiest way to refer to those as drawers. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, um, boy. Uh, during Laura's narrative, the color of the other two girls came and went, and their countenances and nervous twitching of their lips shooed the story excited them. Oh, I wish, said <laughs> Flora, that it were possible to taste such pleasures without the danger and the wickedness of a man. Well, so it is, said Laura, if you are bold enough. Perhaps not the real thing, but at any rate, an excellent substitute, as they say of marmalade. <laughs> oh, whatever could you mean? Said Maud. <laughs> <laughs> well, my dears. Said Laura. You must know that when I read this book, by the by, Flora, you must tell me where you saw a bad book, as, I, as you call it. I found at the end an advertisement of an instrument called a dildo. Oh, yes, I have heard of it, said Flora. Well, I have, in fact, the advertisement in my purse. I will read it to you. Um, and she read as follows. The dildo or lady's syringe. Oh, <laughs> now that to me is as good a note as any to end with that on. <laughs> 